Howard Fox, and I'm a professor here in the Department of Pharmacology and Experimental Neuroscience at UNMC. Choosing a career in research is an interesting choice. Like most scientists, I got into research because I wanted to know how things worked, and I was always curious in, in how things work, and in, in school was good in science and in biology, and I think as is pretty typical, both from parents and from teachers, the advice is, aha, here's somebody who likes biology, is good in science, they should be a doctor. Um, so I went to college, as many people do, as a pre-med, and actually stayed in college, um, taking all the pre-med classes, and as part of that, it's always recommended that one um, do research. And I got into a research lab and had a huge revelation. I really liked this. It was different than um, the college course, laboratory course, where you knew the experiment would work. You know, they were designed to teach and you would get a result at the end. And being in a lab doing biomedical research is different. You know the question you have and you hope the system works. But will you get a result at the end? Sometimes, sometimes not. And even if you do, trying to figure out what the result means was a, a mental challenge um, that you took on not only yourself, but with other people in the lab in a, a team type of environment, uh, deciding what does this mean? What should we do next? How do we, do we really know it and how do we prove it? And this really captivated me. During my training, during research part. Um, I was very interested in developmental biology and right around this time molecular cloning and all the knowledge about DNA and how to manipulate DNA came into fore and so this was really thrilling being you know, on the ground level of all the recombinant DNA and trying to apply it to a, a system how development worked. It was a very basic question with some exciting techniques and I began working on immunology because I was interested in autoimmune diseases. I picked something that is perhaps fairly difficult, and that is what the immune system does in the brain. It's thought that the brain is immune privileged, that the immune system doesn't really have much of a role there, but in fact it does, and one can see that it's very essential if one gets an infection of the brain. You certainly want the immune system there to, to help clear it up. At the same time, and this was in the um, 90s, um, HIV was unfortunately um, quite prevalent, um, and it still is, as was AIDS. And one of the manifestations of HIV infection um, turned out to be brain disease, and people with HIV, a proportion of them, got a, a very serious dementing disease, which was on one hand very surprising because the virus doesn't infect neurons. Um, and instead infects T cells, as we all know, as well as macrophages. But there are macrophages in the brain. So how does the virus get there, and what does the virus do? And that became the subject of my research, as well as how the immune system then goes to the brain and tries to control the virus. So we work a lot on, on how virus, not only HIV, but other viruses, get to the brain. And once in the brain, what not only the brain does, but how the immune system helps react to that virus, and which of these responses are beneficial, and which of them are harmful, so that we could try to tip the balance in the end um, toward beneficial responses. So this is where we have a, a great opportunity research-wise, a great service we could do, and where students uh, play a big role, because with the emerging knowledge and the current technologies, I find students come in with fresh ideas. Right? If we had all the ideas and knowledge, we'd be a lot further, and we don't. And so not only do we, we train students, but we use students, because um, our students here are very bright, uh, they're very well trained, and they make new connections, uh, perhaps because they're unburdened by the biases that we all develop with age. Uh, but that's the thrill for me in having graduate students having new ideas pointed out and how wonderful we have a laboratory and working with the students showing them both the technical side of science as well as the art of science um, work with the students to find ways to investigate those hypotheses um, and come up with new answers and that's the thrill of, of training a grad student when we reach that point that we have discovered new knowledge and it required both halves both the mentor and the student um, to reach that end.